bunch of stuff you get with Natalie that makes her fun to watch. Speaking of watching her, she's the co-creator of the personal development tool called Mind Movies. Natalie makes the law of attraction come alive before your eyes. And here's Natalie. Natalie, it's so exciting. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for having us in your beautiful home. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> I know. It's exciting to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, tell me your story and how you started in business. Oh, wow. Okay. So uh, I actually grew up in a country town in Australia, mm. one of eight children. So I come from very humble beginnings. Where are you in the eight? I am third youngest oh. in the eight. And, uh, and so, you know, my growing up in a country town like that was fun and growing up in a big family was fun. Although the town was not big enough for me. And as soon as I was 18 and old enough, I had to get the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> and I moved to Sydney, which is the, the big city near me. And so uh, I started managing fitness clubs when I was 21 years old. Mm. And I didn't really know what I was doing. I just talked my way into, into this job. So I'm thinking, I think I could figure this out. This will be okay. <laughs> but it was, I had spent 11 years working in the fitness industry. It was my first career. And I learned everything about business that I needed to know. I worked for the best in the industry. And so by the time I met my husband and our first business that we had together was a nightclub. Uh, which was far removed from the, the fitness industry I was used to, but it's a service industry. Mm -hmm. So a, lo a lot of the techniques and things that I'd learned in fitness, I was able to apply to that. And so through my 30s, uh, my husband and I had a multitude of businesses, about 20 different businesses together, mm -hmm. from um, health foods to coffee franchises to you know um, bathroom advertising, like you name it, we were into everything. But we were always, you know, doing all these businesses. Uh, action was never a problem for us, you know, but I felt like we were a car up on a jack and the wheels were spinning, but we weren't getting anywhere. And I remember in 2006, I had this monumental moment of frustration. And I'm like, I don't get it. Like we're working so hard, but why are we still struggling financially? I'm like, I'm missing a piece of information here. And when I was 21, one of my bosses in fitness gave me a set of cassettes by Brian Tracy. So I was introduced to, you know, Tony Robbins and Zig Ziglar and Jim Rohn and all those guys in my 20s. So I knew how to set goals. I knew how to, you know, to put a plan together. So uh, after I'm like, okay, you got, I've got to figure out what I'm missing here. Um, a friend suggested that I order a DVD online, which was called The Secret. And it spoke about the law of attraction. Uh, and I think one of the biggest takeaways I got from that movie was that I didn't need to know the entire plan on how to be able to set a goal. Like I would set achievable goals because I had to see every single step in my mind. But I didn't realize that as long as I was very clear about where I wanted to end up, and I could see myself already there and feel the emotions of what it was like to already be there and then add that to the action that we were already taking, then everything that I needed to make it happen would fall into place for me. And that was a huge lesson. I'm like, oh, this is the piece that I'm missing. Wait, so let me stop you there. Previously, how were you setting your goals? How would you, how would you act? Well, previously, I would set a goal that I knew that I could achieve, mm -hmm. so they were safe. Okay. They were small. They weren't ridiculous, they weren't audacious, they weren't huge. And the quantum leaps that we made or that I made in success went, came, went from, okay, before we were just, you know, we were very good business people. Um, we knew how to run a business well and how to do it successfully. But it wasn't until we added this other element of really being able to visualize and believe and, and set goals and, and clear some of our old programming that we actually had massive success. You know, and with mind movies. Wait, let me stop you. What, okay. it, what is mind movies? And tell me what that is. Yeah, so a mind movie is basically a vision board. It's a visualization tool. So back in 2006, when I'm like, oh, I need to visualize, I found it really difficult to do that. And a friend of ours came to, to Glenn and I with this little movie that he created, which was PowerPoint slides with affirmations, with photos, and then music. So it was his version of a vision board. Uh, and I'm like, this is so cool. And he came to us with the idea of setting up a website and a business online. Now you have to appreciate that at the time, Glenn and I had four businesses that we were running. So we had no time uh, and we knew nothing about the internet. And by that, I mean that Glenn could hardly turn on a computer. <laughs> and I had never even heard of YouTube or you know Facebook or any kind of social media. I, we had a computer, 
but I only used it for bookkeeping. We spent no time on the internet. So that's where we started with this brilliant idea because the secret had just been on Oprah and everyone was talking about visualizing and the law of attraction. And I'm like, okay, so we, we started with putting one little video on YouTube and within months we had so many emails from people saying, this is changing my life. Like, all right, boys, come on, we need to pay attention here. Like, how do we figure out this internet marketing thing? What was the first video about? What was it? Well, <laughs> it was a marketing video. So it was our, you know, a business partner and we were talking about the law of attraction and, and how to, uh, you know, be able to visualize and how to make it easy through creating this movie for yourself. Uh, so that was the initial video. And I don't know how many millions of views we had on that thing. Uh, but because, and, and that with the advice that we got in the beginning, it's like, okay, copy the same keywords from the most popular video about the, the secret and put that on your video. And that's, I, I, in the beginning, I still am like, wait a minute, there's a billion videos on YouTube. How are they finding this one? I don't get it. But, you know, after a while, we sort of started to learn. We, we came over to the US. We attended an internet marketing seminar. Mm. Uh, we were accepted into a mastermind at the time, which was one of the smartest things we did because we were surrounding ourselves with the right people who were knowledgeable, who could give us great advice, fantastic support. Um, and then we proceeded for six months just to work like 10 hours a day from the bedrooms in our little apartment in San Diego, uh, just working on building the websites. And, and we were so far outside of our comfort zone. Like I, w I was 40 years old at the time and I'm trying to learn how to, we're building websites and writing emails and all these things that I'd never had done before. But we were over here really on credit cards. Uh, by the time we got to the launch, which was in September 2008, mm. I mean, when the economic crisis hit the planet, we had no idea what was going on. We had accumulated $120,000 on credit cards. Mm. We'd risked everything. And uh, so it could have gone either way. And we didn't realize until the morning of the launch, it's like, oh my God, what does this mean? Wait and stop and tell us what the launch is. Tell, tell us more about what Mind Movies is. Uh, our pro product or program back then was, you know, instructional videos on how to create these videos for themselves. So people get clear about, you know, the kind of wealth that they want and not, not just what the wealth is, but what wealth looks like mm -hmm. and why they want to create that. Um, and then any kind of actions they're taking and how they need to change the way they think. And when they can describe this through affirmations with matching photos and then of course, the music is the secret source. The music is the soundtrack to this, to your life, you know, and to the life that you're creating. And it becomes an anchor for you. So every time you hear that song, you don't need to be in front of your mind movie to go there in your mind. It takes you there. Your brain starts to populate already. So uh, this is, you know, the, the mind movie's essence. And so back then it was, you know, the instructions. So a launch, like an online launch, is basically a, a week beforehand where you have a whole ton of uh, affiliates or joint venture partners who are promoting you to their email lists. Now, we, went, we started with 8,000 people on our list. It was very small. But at the end of that initial week, it had blown out to 80,000 people. Actually, so fast that the email a delivery company that was, you know, servicing our list shut down our account because they thought we did. They thought we were doing something illegal. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they also closed down the morning of the launch for maintenance. So we had three thousand customer support emails by lunchtime on the first day because <laughs> no one was getting their confirmation emails. Um, but you know, we we had a little moment of stress and going, you know, what does this mean? So once we opened up the the payment gateway, I mean, we did a hundred thousand dollars in the first hour. Huge success. Huge. So going back to Mind Movies and why it's so valuable, um, I had, thank you so much for your gift. I got to play with my own Mind Movie. And let me just tell you, do you know how long I've been craving setting something up visually? But it seems so hard online getting your whole slideshow, plus the music, plus the affirmations. It was just daunting. So you gave me this gift and I think within 10 minutes I created something and I have chills because it was so easy and so fun. You've made it so um, user friendly and it gives me ideas and now I have my own my movie. That's so good. Yes. I know. Well, initially it was just little video tutorials, but then, you know, once we got some success, we created our own software. So inside are all of the assets, you know, there's a whole library of affirmations and photos and music so you can just drag and drop. 
And I've had the immense pleasure of being able to uh, help people personally create their own mind movies. You know, I work a lot with Dr. Joe Dispenza, so he's been using mind movies in his live workshops for eight years now. And so I'll be at these events and helping people make their mind movie. And, you know, like you said, once they've created it and they watch it for the first time, tears is normally the, the, the initial yes. reaction because it's like, wow, I can actually see this now. And it's so easy. You've yeah. taken the stress out of it and you see your vision. And then what you said, I didn't realize it until you said it, the music adds that dimension. And then there's, isn't there subliminal things in there you've yeah. added too? Yeah, so we have, I mean, we have a lot of technology yeah. when it comes to little hacks, little tools, little things that make it just a little bit more effective for you. And so, you know, we have a whole library of like subliminal tracks that actually get laced in underneath the music. So these are all affirmations that you don't consciously hear, but subconsciously your brain is absorbing all of that and reprogramming your subconscious mind at a much faster pace. So tell me some of your favorite stories of people who've used my movies and had great success. I remember this one lady came in to the workshop, she sits down like this, and I said to my team, I said, I'll, I'll look after this one. And I go, what can I do for you? She goes, look, I'm only here because Dr. Joe said I had to be here and I don't have a computer and I haven't started and I'm not very technical. And I go, it's okay, it's all right. So I le loaned her my computer and kind of set her up. And then at the end, I'm like, okay, well, do you want us to preview it before we send it to the process? And she goes, okay. And we previewed it and she was had tears falling down her face. She goes, oh my God, she goes, this is my life. This is the life I want, I go, yep. But that's, it's a common response when people are, you know, creating their mind movies and they get to watch it for the first time. And I've had the blessing of being in the presence of thousands of people when they're having that experience. It's crazy. Even inside his events, he'll have, like, you know, he'll have 1,500, 2,000 people and he, he gets people to watch his kaleidoscope that gets them into suggestible mind and then they're watching their mind movie. And I remember the first time, like everyone, it's black, and all you can see is everyone's face is lit up from whatever their device is, <laughs> and you can hear people crying huh? in, in the audience. It's, it's wild. It's magical. Yeah, it is. And you did it, you created it. I still make mind movies now. Okay, let's hear about yours. Okay, so, uh, so last year. So at the beginning of every year, I create a, a general mind movie of all the things I wanna do for the year. Mm -hmm. But then I'll create one that's more specific to each project. And so uh, last year I created one about, um, you know, my school project uh, and I got my first US school starting to teach the program. So it came into fruition. Uh, and uh, so you want to hear about the program? Sure. Yeah. So it's called Personal Growth Studies. It's a social emotional learning curriculum uh, to help kids from K to 12 have the skills and the tools that they need to be able to deal with the overwhelm. And of course, after the you know, at a year like 2020, it's, it's a, it, kids are really needing these tools a lot more than, than before. Yes. So we already have that being taught in one, one school. Uh, the other one was on my health. And so uh, I have already lost, you know, I actually had put on the COVID-15, which is the 15 pounds you put on during COVID. Uh, <laughs> yes. But I've been able to, to lose that weight and I'm definitely a lot more fit and healthier than I've been before. And let me back up, you, you created mind movies in all of these areas. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So keep telling us. And then the last one was around love. And I um, met my perfect partner last year. Wait, tell me details. <laughs> tell me tell me what you put on the mind movie and tell me what happened. Yeah, so with my mind movie for love, um, the song I used was All of Me by John Legend. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite love songs. Um, but in my mind movie, I describe how I show up in relationship. I describe the characteristics that I'm looking for in my partner, then I'm describing the relationship that we have. And so, you know, there were some pretty big things on there, like, you know, having time and money freedom, uh, you know, being open to personal development. You know, it was pretty specific about it, a number of things. And um, yeah, I've been in this in beautiful, incredible relationship for five months now, and I'm very, very happy. <laughs> well, I've met him. And when I first came in, I thought you two had been together for 20 years, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but let me also say, this is during COVID and dating is not easy. So it, your dream came in even 
in well, hard circumstances. Well, this is the beauty of being able to um, put together a, or, or to implement a system of manifestation. Mm -hmm. When you know what that system is, you know that formula, it doesn't matter what's happening around you. It doesn't matter what's happening economically or if there's a pandemic or whatever is going on in, you know, with the government. It makes no difference because we get to create our own reality. Tell us more about that. What does that mean? That tell, Teach us how that works. Yeah, so I actually have a six-step formula hmm. on how to create anything that you want. Uh, and, and the first step starts with, you know, our energy. Uh, I call it being in your happy place. Because unless we're in a positive or a higher frequency emotion, then it's difficult for us to be able to see past the pain or the debt or the loneliness that we're, that we're in. We need to get to a higher frequency. What we understand is that, you know, with the law of attraction, we, we need to be a vibrational match to the things that we want to attract to make it happen. And the way that we change our vibration is through the emotions that we feel. So higher frequency emotions are things like gratitude or love or joy or pride or accomplishment or courage you know, these higher frequencies. And the more that we can hang out in those higher frequencies, the more in flow we are and the easier things are. And, you know, the more positive outcomes we can see, we can see solutions. We start to notice all the things that we need to make our, our reality true um, because we're, you know, in that higher frequency. So gratitude is one of the easiest ways to get there. And if you don't have a gratitude practice, I highly recommend that you start writing in a journal or at least have one thing that you do every day. For me, it's taking my little dog for a walk. That's my activity where I drop into my grateful mm. so make sure I'm you know, in that higher frequency. Uh, then step two is to set an intention. And this is kind of like a line in the sand. This is like, no matter what, this is happening. Mm. You know, no matter what, I am in a loving relationship or no matter what, I'm earning $10,000 a month or whatever that is. Um, and I recite that to myself, looking at myself in the eyes in the mirror each morning for at least a week. And I want to say that with so much conviction and so much resolve that even I believe it's going to happen. <laughs> what if you don't believe it's going to happen? Well, then I go to the next step, which is step number three, which is to really get clear about what it is that you want. Okay. And I do that through writing out affirmations because affirmations are using the language that I want to use. Like I wouldn't say I want to be debt free because every word in that sentence is conjuring up a picture in our mind. This is how our brains work. And so if I hear the word debt or see the word debt, it's just taking me back to that moment in 2006 where I'm like, what's going on? So for me, it's like, I want to make sure that every word is describing exactly what it is that I do want. You know, I want to be financially free. I want to be financially abundant. You know, so um, I talk about what it is that I want. I talk about what life looks like now that I have it, because this is going to fuel our visualizations. I talk about why I want it, because if I'm going to get stuck and hit a hurdle like we all do, this is what's going to keep me motivated to keep moving forward. I talk about any kind of actions, you know, or changes to my daily practice. But then the last one, which is actually really important, is how do I need to change the way I think to become this wealthy person or this loving person or this healthy person? Because the good news and the bad news is, is that our thoughts create our reality. So if we have a reality right now that we're not completely happy with, the good news is that your thoughts created it. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is change our thoughts. So when we can be purposeful about thinking, well, how does a wealthy person think? Now, how does a person that has a great relationship with food think, you know, and then write those out and then see ourselves, you know, already operating from those thought paradigms and how it influences positively the outcomes that we create in our life as well. So that's step number three. Okay. Give me an example of what you would say to yourself in the mirror and then what let's use money for an example like what would a wealthy person think give me more concrete examples oh great okay so I know that a wealthy person is not being uh, thrown off kilter every time a, uh, an invoice or a bill comes in the mail mm. I know that uh, a wealthy person either has those on automatic payment or is grateful for the fact that they have electricity or that they have a phone that they can communicate with their families with so you know being grateful for things money coming in being grateful for money going out super important. Um, when they are faced with an issue, they're not thinking, well, how am I going to make enough money to get to the end of the week? They're like, well, how am I going to invest for my future? Mm. You know, how am I looking at the long-term effect of how I'm, I'm spending my money and how I'm earning my money? 
So it's, you know, there's, there's these subtle shifts, but you just go, you know, these make the world of difference. Mm. Because if we want to resonate and vibrate at the frequency of someone who's wealthy, we need to be wealthy first. Mm. You know, we need to think like a wealthy person. We need to act like a wealthy person. Now, it doesn't mean spending money that you don't have, but it definitely means things like, you know, being generous with tips, mm. um, you know, being leaving extra coins in the parking meter, um, you know, being generous with your time, being generous with your energy, being generous with, you know, random acts of kindness. Mm. Because whenever you are acting from a place of generosity like that, you're basically signaling to yourself and the universe that you live in an abundant universe. And the thing is, it's not that you just know that, you know, through acknowledging it, but you're embodying it. Mm -hmm. And then you're resonating at a whole different frequency. Okay, so that's step number three. Number three. Step number four is our visualizations. Mm. Now, if we can't see ourselves already in this future, then it's very difficult for us to create that. So a mind movie or a vision board or even just a list of affirmations is going to help to give your brain a place to start. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, through Dr. Joe Dispenza, one of the ways that he teaches to visualize, which I love, is that rather than seeing yourself as a character in a movie, you actually put yourself in the scene. Now, there was a woman uh, in Australia who was doing this at one of these events. And so, uh, you know, we're watching our mind movie, then we're going into a meditation, and then we're choosing one scene from our mind movie, so one moment. So think of a moment of like when you're wealthy, what does that mean to you? And then put yourself in that moment. Like, but where's not, that one picture? Like you capture yeah, it in your mind. That's right, but you're in the scene. Mm. What are you smelling? What are you tasting? And this woman, her and her husband had been struggling financially. They'd put their house on the market to try and you know, shift some of the debt, but they had no offers. And this is after a month. And so at the event, when she went to do this exercise, she's in her living room. She can feel the pen in her hand. She sees herself signing the contract. She can smell the real estate agent's aftershave. Mm -hmm. And she can feel the bubbles of the champagne on her nose and taste the champagne because she's celebrating. She is so in that scene. And when you do that, your subconscious mind doesn't realize that that's not happening in this moment. It doesn't know the difference between what we see through our eyes and what we play is this very vivid uh, event. And so the more often you can do that, what's happening is that we're starting to create these new neural pathways in our brains that has thoughts traveling along them that are in alignment with the visualization that we're, that we're doing. So, you know, and most people think, well, do I have to be sitting down, carve out some time, be in the meditation position to, uh, to um, visualize? That's not the case. I mean, you could be vacuuming the house. Mm -hmm. You could be driving the car. You could be doing you could be anything. Singing. Yeah, whatever. Exactly. That doesn't take a lot of um, mental effort. And I call it daydreaming with intention. Mm. And the more often that you can go there, what happens is it starts to change your thoughts. And thoughts will automatically start to change your actions. So when your thoughts, actions, and emotions are all in alignment with this future that you want to create, you are a vibrating beacon for everything that you need to make it happen. It's so exciting. Um, okay, tell us the next step. Okay, so the next step is taking action. Mm. Doesn't matter what kind of action you take, all action is gonna lead you to where you need to go. So don't worry about that. So just start taking some kind of action. Oh, why? Why does just anything, just take one step into, into, into what you think? Yeah, like for example, um, before you know, our friend came to us with the idea of my movies, uh, we were involved in a network marketing business. Mm. Now, I was convinced that that business was going to be the business that would help to give us the lifestyle that we wanted. Um, and so when, you know, our Ryan came along, our friend came along with this idea of my movies, uh, I remember a year later looking at this list of affirmations I'd written out about the other business and going, wow, I created that through my movies. And if someone had to come to me a day before our friend came to us with the idea and said, you're gonna have this life and better, and you're gonna do it through the internet, I would have laughed. I'm like, there's no way, I don't know anything <laughs> about the internet. But the thing is, we met Ryan through the network marketing business. So it, it's, everything is breadcrumbs. Everything will lead you to something else, especially if you're open and you're being aware of everything that's coming into your peripheral. So you, it, it, you don't have to have your ducks in a row. You don't have to have a plan laid out. You just need to know what the next step is. What is the first step? And then what's the next step after that? And that's how you, you know, overcome the mountain. Okay, go over the steps again and then t remind us again 
that anything is possible? It means anything is possible? Anything. Honestly, anything. Anything that we put our mind to. Now, the more often that you go through these steps, what you're doing is you see belief and expectation are two of the most important ingredients when it comes to manifesting what you want. And when you repetitively are doing these steps, it is building your belief, especially if you're acknowledging all of the things that went right, all of the things that fell into place. Like there are so many things that fell into place for us to create my movies that we could never have planned for. Mm -mm. So, you know, acknowledging those things as they come along, what it's doing, it's building this evidence so that you know that without a shadow of a doubt that what you put your mind to and that you're taking action towards, you are able to, to be able to create. So first step is be in your happy place. Okay. Then set your intention. Get clear about what you want. Do your visualizations. Take your action. Now the last step, which is the hard one. It's taken me years to be able to, to master this, and that is surrender. We have to surrender into knowing that everything's happening in divine timing exactly when it's supposed to. It may not look the way that we want it to, it may not happen the way that we think it's going to, but everything that's happening is happening for our highest good. And the more that we can embody that and live from that, when something comes along like a pandemic or a breakup or a business failing, it doesn't knock us off course. It doesn't derail us. It's like, oh, okay, this is not what I planned. This is interesting. I wonder what I'm meant to learn from this. Mm. Now, by doing that, you are looking for the positive. You are staying in your higher frequencies and you're not losing the opportunity. Because if something keeps showing up for us in our life, this, the same kind of mistake or the same kind of event, then it's like, okay, I really need to take a look at this because there's something that I'm missing. There's something that this is meant to teach me so that I can move on to the next level. I've had um, so many experiences of that and I love the way you're approaching it and it's kind of, I've switched it lately to thank you for that lesson. Thank you for letting me see it so I can grow from it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's helped dramatically. Yeah. Okay. Do you get scared and do you have lessons still? <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. Um, and I think for anyone who shoots for something huge and audacious, hmm. that uh, fear is always gonna be a part of that process. I think the difference between people who are successful and those who are still on their way to success is that we all feel fear when we think about that bigger goal, but successful people don't stay there. Ooh. We keep moving forward, we keep moving through it because we understand it's part of the process. You know, like this, the personal growth studies, you know, I have this audacious goal of being able to implement a social emotional learning curriculum into schools around the world. Like not just, you know, a couple of schools here and there, like this is a huge project that I've taken on. And you know, it, it did scare the bejesus out of me in the beginning, I'll be honest with you. And I still have moments on that journey where I go, this is too hard. What am I doing? Like, you know, but I stay the course and I always, I live and keep seeing myself at that end result. You know, speaking at the UN or uh, being in a classroom where children are just smiling and laughing and pulling on my clothes and I'm speaking to a teacher and she has tears. It's like, it's made a massive difference to these kids. You know, because sometimes children just need one person to tell them that they believe in them and that they're amazing and it can make the world of difference for them. So yeah, fear is definitely a part of the process. Uh, you just don't want to hang out there. It's not a great place to hang out. <laughs> I love it. I have chills on your vision. I can feel it. It's so exciting. Uh, what do you want us to know? If there's something, someone at home who needs to hear what you want to tell them, what should she know? Well, I think what holds us back, especially women, I mean, all of us, but women especially, is that we get to a certain part in our life where we've been a mother, we've, you know, been a wife, we've, you know, been in different businesses and careers. We've, we've done some, you know, we've lived life. We've had some experience. You know, when you get to the ages of like 40 and 50, we get to this place where we have all this wisdom. We have this great perception. Um, and we can access all of these superpowers, these gifts. Uh, and I think for some of us, some women think, well, if I'm 50, then, then that's it. Like, I, the game's over. But this is just when life gets juicy. This is just when we are really well equipped to be able to step into a career or a business that is purposeful mm. and that is meaningful and that can be of service. 
we are in the best time of our lives to do that. And so, you know, we don't wanna, we don't wanna play small. Now is the time for us to really step up. You know, when we're looking at all the different industries that are coming in now, AI, like technology, women, we need a seat at the table. We need to have an influence here. We need to have a voice here because we bring to the table something different to men. You know, we can see, we can work in, by collaboration. You know, we can see how we can serve the community at large rather than being self-serving. And I'm not saying that all men are self-serving, but you know, this is the paradigm of business that we want to be moving into. Mm -hmm. And I think that women are really a great way to be able to carry that flag. I, I've been thinking of you and it's like you're teaching us to dream again. Like you're teaching us, it's not scary, it's the way, that's the path to get what you want. Well, and that's the thing, like we really can create anything that we want. And it's just, it's actionable steps. It's, you know, it's one step at a time. You know, and I think sometimes we'll, we'll get caught up in the, in the little voice that we have in the back of our mind, our, our limiting beliefs, our, our programming, our sabotaging behaviors. Uh, but we can move through those as well. When we understand where they come from and be able to release those and get to a place of, of awareness and then forgiveness and then going, okay, well, if I'm releasing these, what am I choosing to think instead? How am I acting differently? And making a conscious choice to do that, then we, uh, normally we are the bottleneck. And I know that whenever I've been stuck in life, I'm the one that's the bottleneck. I'm the one that's <laughs> holding me back. And I'm like, okay, well, this is a great opportunity for me to understand what that is be able to release and clear that so that I can move forward in a more empowered way and serve the way that I want to. When you hear the millionaire within her, what does it make you think of? It makes me feel of abundance, mm -hmm. but abundance not just of money, because money in itself is great, but it's a means to an end. Money is what gives us the ability to serve more, to, to reach more people, to, uh, to be able to really positively influence the people that we love. You know, money is just a means to be able to do that. And when we can get really clear about, you know, what money means to us and what that represents, then that's what gives us the fuel to be able to, to look at a million dollars and go, oh, a million dollars. We can blast past a million dollars. That's not a lot of money. Um, and when we can be comfortable in feeling that and knowing that, then we have the ability to create so much abundance of everything that we want in our lives. You are an angel. I can't wait to play my mind movie over and over. <laughs> it gives me chills. It makes me happy. It really, it's a special gift. So thank you so much for teaching us, for letting us dream again. Since I was a kid, I'm, I'm back into my dreams. So thank you so much. Thank you, Daddy. Did you start your own mind movie? I learned so much about the power of the mind and how to use the magic of my own mind movie to help me move forward.